It was an instrument that was used in protest. The overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom, this provisional government that was installed. In the middle of all this turmoil, you have something so beautiful as the ukulele begin to, to emerge. This is where it all came from, and then we're building off of that, and we can actually hear that these guys are serious builders. It's always been from the shoulders of others that you've actually uh, learned to build, and it's no different than the ukulele. The individuals that made these instruments intended them to be played. They tell a story. I mean, you can look at them and you can see the fingerboard wear. You can see the nicks and dings and scratches and repairs. And so there's something to be said about the stories that they can tell and then something to be said about the stories that we hope to continue to learn from the community. That first generation of ukuleles really uh, is something really special. The remarkable thing about the history of the ukulele is that even though it is an iconic instrument that everyone assumes originated in Hawaii, it actually originated on the island of Madeira. and was brought to the islands by plantation contract workers. There are three um, pioneers uh, of the ukulele, um, Augusto Diaz, Manio Nunes, and Jose do Espirito Santo. They all came aboard the Raven's Crag, which was the second of the ships that were uh, commissioned by the royal government to try to address the shortage of field hands on sugar plantations. As far as I can tell, none of them had ever worked a day of their lives uh, in agriculture in any way. They were all from the main city in Madeira, Funchal, and all were trained as cabinet makers. So they were actually skilled workers uh, which is one of the reasons why they took off for Honolulu as soon as they could. I'd like to play you a song that was written a long time ago. And the reason why I want to play this song for you, other than that, other than the fact that it has a different kind of emotional impact, uh, is to show you the versatility, not only of, of the instrument, but uh, of the Hawaiian people. Diaz, Santu, and uh, Nunez immediately came to Honolulu uh, got jobs uh, working at uh, local furniture companies, but as soon as they could, opened up their own furniture slash uh, guitar shops, um, uh, which was in the 1884, 1885. And within a decade of the opening of those first shops, the machette, which is what the Madeiran instrument was originally known as, had become the ukulele. It, it, was, it was an instrument that was used in protests. I mean, famous songs like Kaulana Napua, which is a song of protest. All of these things begin to emerge. And so in the middle of all this turmoil, you have uh, 
something so beautiful as the ukulele began to, to emerge. It was these instruments that were used to play the original versions of a whole range of classic Hawaiian songs. So what Sean is doing is giving everyone the opportunity to go back to the beginning and have a chance to hear what it might have been like to hear these classic songs for the very first time. Until we meet again. Born and raised in Hawaii, I've always been surrounded by music. You cannot help but hear the ukulele when you're driving around, when you're shopping, uh, going out with, at friends' uh, houses and so forth. There's always some kanikapilo or music going on in the background. And so it's, it's always been there. But it was really when I lived abroad. I lived in Japan uh, on three separate occasions. I went to three different universities there. Um, uh, through Kapilani Community College and University of Hawaii. And through that experience, I began to realize how much um, I, I, I really miss home. Uh, and, and ukulele was a big part of that. And so I really took it upon myself to, to learn uh, more, uh, a little bit on the playing side, but more on, on the history, the construction, the different techniques, the woods, materials, all of those wonderful things that kind of go into a handcrafted instrument and, and, and the end result being something that we all are all so familiar and so in love with today, right? Even worldwide, the ukulele is just such a popular instrument worldwide. So this would be that first iteration of ukulele. This would be from Hawaiian Kingdom period. So this predates the overthrow. This is the times of, of King Kalakaua. You know, people often ask me how do you find these? Um, I, I'm just one guy in this bigger sprocket of ukulele world and I'm so grateful because the ukulele world is so giving and um, I learned so much uh, you know from all of these individuals on the playing side, on the building side, on the his historical side uh, and I find myself in these positions where the instruments kind of find me. <laughs> and I think that people I, uh, realize um, that, you know, I would be a good steward of, of these instruments. They believe um, that in, in, the, in the project uh, and that they are willing to um, entrust these instruments to me. And they're really a part of the bigger story in Hawaii for music and music culture and the history and the ukulele that really needs to be told. It's been a long journey of meeting some amazing people along the way. But for these instruments, um, we're excited. Yeah, we're excited for things to come. I've been making uh, ukuleles and guitars for um, since the mid 80s, so it's a long time. I have made the ukulele based on uh, plans that I picked up from uh, McKinley Industrial School, that's McKinley High School now. Um, found some old plans, uh, looked into Martin archives for uh, dimensions, and from that created a shape and design and uh, a plan. I'm um, in a kind of fortunate position. Um, I'm a retired contractor. The shop is my former Mokihana builder shop. So um, I don't have to make ukuleles for a living. I make it because it's a passion. So I guess I'm known to, um, for teaching of course. You draw one bird. 
Then you segment it. You wow. cut out the pieces. You stick it together. So a normal ukulele has a sound hole, sides, a soundboard, and a net. That's a fretboard, and that's truly it. But to that, if you look around at what I have, um, the rest of it is just, um, I, I call it just egg in the corner. It's just stuff you want to do to enhance the ukulele. We're kind of like the laboratory. You can kind of do a lot of things, you know. The sound you're looking for is in your head. The problem is that you won't know it until you hear it. So as you're building, you're chasing that. What I tell my students is, you're following this recipe. Um, I've given you the recipe. Um, you're following the chef here and, and you're, you're doing the steps. There are six of you. Um, we'll do every step in accordance to the plan. All the processes are the same. But when we finish, you'll have six different sounding ukuleles. You, you don't want to do the same thing. You kind of want to fool around. And, and, and that, that's the beauty of it all. And I think that's what keeps me, at least for myself, really involved in a ukulele. Um, normally, a, a good passion lasts for about 10 years and then you move on. But uh, this one has been on for a long time because um, uh, it's rewarding. It's been a long time in the works um, because I've just been passionate about the history of the ukulele and part of that passion um, was not only well, kind of selfishly, I wanted to hear these instruments. Not, I had collector friends that collected these instruments, but I was always wondering about the sound of these early ukulele and from the purist perspective for, for collectors, they would keep these instruments, but typically you would just keep them in the condition that they're that you received them in. You, you wouldn't generally do repairs, you wouldn't string them up and let alone play them. Um, but I, I really believe that the spirit of the people that made these instruments was such that these instruments be played. And so it's very important for me to be able to hear, to learn, but also to share the sound of these instruments. So the vision for this particular project is is for us to be able to share the sound of these instruments, but also contextualize what we're uh, uh, affording the community and the musicians to experience and community to hear. And we're doing that in such a way by partnering with um, some of Hawaii's you know, top ukulele musicians and vocalists. We'll be using Hawaiian kingdom period instruments, so instruments that predate the overthrow when King Kalakaua was still king. We'll be using instruments from that time period and sheet music from the Hawaii State Archives. I'm really excited to be partnering with the Hawaii State Archives on this. The archives focuses very heavily on written word. And so we've been preserving records in paper format for 115 years. Yet in Hawaii, it's, it's very much an oral tradition. There are incredible numbers of, of mele and chants that were never written down, that were only orally transmitted. And so as an archives, we're, we're really embracing the indigenous culture to say, these are important records too that we need to document. For us, embracing the musical method, you know, the, the, the message is in the medium in this case, and breathing life back into these pieces using period instruments strung with period style strings will really breathe life back into these incredible pieces of history that just lay sleeping in the archives. Having the ability to record these things in an incredible state-of-the-art studio, so we're generating pure sound with no errors, no extraneous noise, gives us an opportunity to really unlock this experience for people who cannot travel. This studio is built to educate our young people. This studio is to build to support our culture. 
this studio is here to support our, um, our, our local artists first. And so it's a perfect project. And what better project can you have for the very first project for this studio? I think we need to pay attention. Our young people need to pay attention. The significance of this project is the ukulele is a vehicle to understanding our past. The deeper we can understand the historic roots of this instrument, the better we can understand their struggles, their joys, their triumphs of everybody who played this instrument before us. We're called Ukulele Hale. We have students of all ages, all skill levels. Our youngest is four and a half. Our oldest student is uh, in, in his 90s. Growing up in Hawaii, there's always the generational uh, connection. You know, grandparents gifting their grandkids ukuleles or you can go to a family's uh, gathering and there's going to be people jamming and playing the ukulele. We call it kanakapila. And so we grew up around the ukulele. You know, the sound, um, the jam sessions. And, and so that's just a part of growing up. And, and so I think it's so important to continue that legacy that our grandparents and generations beyond have passed down. You know, it's just a humble little instrument really that has the power to do so many great things. And that's something that I wanna continue to perpetuate and teach um, my students or our students and, and know that they can use the ukulele to, to connect with people from around the world. We speak different languages. The one thing that's constant is, is that music is the universal language of mankind. And you know, it transcends culture, um, language barriers, and it unites us. This, this humble little instrument brings so much joy, brings unity, it's good medicine, it's peace, health, happiness. And again, that's why I call it the instrument of Aloha. It connects us to our family, to our history, to our culture. And it's just an easy way to teach our students, not through history books, but by playing together, by, by going out into the community and performing for others, you know, and, and going into care homes. Um, and these seniors have grown up hearing the ukulele. So I think it's very important to bring the younger generation out into the community and to know that they can share their love and passion for music, for ukulele, with the world. No matter like where you are, where you're from, it, it definitely is something that connects people. And you know, even like music that you, you were listening in the past, it kind of like intrigues, it kind of triggers like memories from the past. Even though I'm in this film considered the next generation, I love to play with the kids so-called the next generation and it's very very exciting to me to go to these schools and play with these kids and see them enjoying music enjoying the ukulele enjoying our Hawaiian culture and it's insane how fast they pick up things and it's honestly kind of scary to see <laughs> how good they are so I think the future of the ukulele is in very good hands. Music is so in, ingrained, intertwined with Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian music. It's the pairing of the instrument as an extension to the musician.
The collection of instruments I'm quite sure that we have is the single largest collection of pre-1900 ukuleles in the world. And because these individuals who created these instruments intended them to be played, how wonderful is it that we can find that balance, restore these instruments, and then begin to share the sound of these instruments. Who played this before me? What parties uh, did this instrument play at? Was this instrument a part of the protests against the overthrow of the government? It's about telling the history of Hawaii accurately, um, and also being able to uh, honor those that, that came before us. He's restoring these instruments to playable condition to give everyone the opportunity to actually hear what those early musicians and the royal family actually heard. It's, it's really exciting. Our long-term objective as well is to be able to leave something that is not purely an archive recording of historical instruments, but really is a contribution to the next generation uh, that we're archiving family history and we're archiving music history and we're archiving the sound of these instruments. So, so many different possibilities and veins, but it really is the responsibility of the community, the responsibility of all of us, whether we're musicians or ukulele builders, whether you have Hawaiian blood or not, you know, all of us that call Hawaii home is so important for us to be able to capture these stories before they are lost.